Hi guys and welcome back to another TechMinds video. So this is the new Radtail RT920 and with the latest firmware that was released yesterday, this has to be one of the best handheld radios in its class that is available right now. Now first up, let's talk about the specifications. So it's primarily a dual band transceiver covering the two meters and the 70 centimeter handband. Now the specs say it's high power, but again, we'll check that out later in the video. Now this radio also has a built-in HF multi-mode receiver, meaning you can listen to ham radio from around the world chatting on SSB. And again, we'll check that out shortly. The RT920 is a fairly chunky radio, and down the left side we have the usual PTT and two programmable function buttons, which are actually very useful. Down the right side, we have that usual Kenwood style speaker mic socket, which also doubles up as the programming cable connection. Chunkiness feel is partly due to the wide and deep chassis, along with a 2200 milliamp hour battery. Now, the radio itself does not have a USB C socket, but the battery does, meaning you can pretty much charge the battery from any USB source. Now, the top of the radio is rather interesting. And what appears to be a center knob actually reveals itself to be a female SMA socket. Now the cover for this is actually a screw on type, unlike the push on ones that we've seen on other radios. Now this SMA socket is for connecting an HF antenna for when the HF receiver is activated. The keypad can be used to direct dial a frequency or if pressed and held, activates the function that's printed on the actual button. And with the radio powered on, we're presented with a fairly decent looking screen and what appears to show two VFOs with a nice black background. Now, I really do like these radios with a black background. I don't think I've ever told you before. So just in case you didn't hear me, I really do like radios with the black background. Anyway, moving on. Another feature of this radio is that it includes Bluetooth. So you can hook up your mobile device and use the walkie talkie tool app to completely program the radio from your phone. That's over Bluetooth, so no programming cables are really needed. You can of course still buy a programming cable and use the free Windows software to program the radio. At the time of making this video, there was not a native RT920 support within that popular programming tool called Chirp. Now another cool feature of this radio is the band scope. It looks nice and pretty with its colors on that black background. Now this is not an SDR, so don't expect it to show you a scan of the band and then be able to listen all at the same time, like you would on an SDR. Now to activate the built-in HF receiver, you can press and hold the zero key, but I program one of the side buttons for a single press access. It takes a couple of seconds to boot up, but once you're there, you can just type in a frequency. Change the mode and listen to the HF comms. Tango X ray. D0 DTX John uh, 59 plus, Roger. Yeah, Roger, Roger. Uh, yeah, you're also on 59 plus, mate. Um, Run a bit of power. Yeah, you're about 600 watts, Roger. Keep cranky. Uh, I'm, I'm passing myself as QRP on 200, Roger. <laughs> Okay, the way carry on, mate. Nice to get you again. Cheers, old DTX. Tango X Now, prior to yesterday's firmware release, the BFO did not work, but now it does, as you could have seen there. And obviously, that helps tuning those stations correctly. Now, if you already own a 920, 
then I would highly recommend that you use this latest firmware version, which of course is available on the Radtail website. Now the sensitivity of this receiver is also pretty good. Now I compared it to some high-end SDR receivers with the antenna split to both at the same time, and the 920 could actually hear everything the other SDRs could hear, even with weak signals. So I don't know what they've done, but they've done it quite well. So let's perform some quick power tests and according to this small power meter up on the two meter band, it outputs around six and a half watts. If we then change the radio's frequency to 435 megahertz, the 70 centimeter band, we see an output of just under seven watts. So this radio can also transmit out of band. And the first we will try is the four meter band at 70 megahertz and that shows around five watts. Now at 6 meters, which is 50 megahertz, we see an output of around 4 watts. On 10 meters at 29 megahertz, we see an output of around 3 watts. Now down on 11 meters, we see power output around 4 watts, but it appears to be starting to creep up. How strange is that? However, I would take these out of spec transmission power levels with a ton of salt. And the reason for that? Well, it's the spurious emissions. So let's take a look at those. Now on two meters at 145 megahertz looks very clean indeed and actually provides a little confidence in Radtail's ability to produce a clean transmitting radio. Remember the two meter band is one of the bands that this radio is actually specified to work on. So that's a massive tick. Up on the 70 centimeter band at 435 megahertz, we see a similar result. Looks extremely clean with no harmonics at least higher than the noise floor level of my tiny SA Ultra. So if we start to check the out of spec bands that this radio can transmit on, we do start to see some issues. Now this is the 1.25 meter band at around 221 megahertz. Now if we now test down at 70 megahertz, which is the four meter band, the second harmonic is actually higher than the fundamental. So that's totally unusable. If we next look at the 6 meter band at 50 megahertz, we see another complete disaster. That's also totally unusable. If we now jump down to the 10 meter band, this is what we see. And again, a complete disaster and totally unusable. Now this is going to be exactly the same on the 11 meter band. So using this on the CB band, you might be tuned to that frequency, but you're going to be transmitting with as much power on multiple frequencies. Now this is no fault of Radtel. The radio has clearly been designed to transmit on the two meter and 70 centimeter band and to be within spec of those large frequency regulating organizations. But anyone using this radio outside of those bands would be completely irresponsible because you simply don't know what other services you could be interfering with. So lastly then, let's hear what the transmitted audio sounds like. Zero DQW, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, testing the audio transmission on the Radtel RT920. RT920, M0 DQW, over. This is uh, M0 DQW, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, testing a narrow audio, narrow FM audio on the Radtel RT920. RT920, this is uh, M0 DQW, FM narrow. This is uh, M0 DQW, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, testing narrow transmission with the noise reduction turned on. This is the noise reduction turned on, uh, transmitting with narrow FM over. Now that noise reduction was actually a nice touch. I actually put my air conditioning unit on for the last part of that test and, well, it appeared to completely eliminate it. Nice. Now for those interested in receiving airband, this radio really does perform well receiving airband. I know not all of you like that as a feature, but some of you do, and I think it's a nice addition, especially if it demodulates amplitude modulation well. Uh, Bristol side 965, Flight level 310, So that's the Radtel RT920. If you want a radio that's legal on 2 and 70, 
This is a good radio for that. It does have wideband receive and when full mode is enabled, it can receive up to 999 megahertz. In my opinion, this is currently the best in its class. I know we've seen a few other radios like this, but with the recent firmware update from yesterday, it's definitely pushed its way to the top. Anyway guys, thanks so much for watching. Until next one, take care yourselves and I'll see you in the next one.